Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and today we are going to be looking at some of that incredible intro solo that you just saw played. Now this is of course a transcription of a piano solo arranged for the guitar. Now originally this was featured in Jim and Dorothy's YouTube video where she looked at lots of different piano players interpreting giant steps. So this was her take on what someone like Red Garland might have sounded like if he had played on the song Giant Steps. And the vocabulary falls very in line with the sounds that I'm interested in. So we are going to look at that. I'm going to start the show by talking about piano. Of course, they are a sponsor of the channel now. As many of you know, I have been playing piano for about eight months now, and it has totally reinvigorated my entire approach to music. It's been so much fun, and I would encourage you to pick up the piano if you would like to start looking a little bit more at theory, uh, ear training, things like that. Absolutely fantastic. And I've been using Piano for that. There is a link in the description if you'd like to get a 30 day free trial, absolutely free trial, and it supports the channel. So please do go and sign up for a free trial of Piano today and help the channel out. So let's talk about this solo. So the first thing that's worth talking about is just how I've gone about arranging this on the guitar. The reason I did this solo is because as a, uh, a new piano player, if you like, I have found that there are many things that you do on the piano that fit very naturally under the fingers and could be considered trademark licks of the instrument. And you see this with any instrument that you look at. Saxophonists have trademark licks. Fiddle players have trademark licks. Just sounds that work very well on the instrument. And if we can adapt some of those to the guitar, we might be able to bring some new sounds into our playing. Now, if you check my Instagram, which is Levi Clay 88 you will see that I uploaded a video of me playing this just yesterday and I've changed the fingerings in the last 24 hours and that was because of the experimentation that I've been doing. When you listen to a piano player or a piano solo, what you notice is there's a consistency in tone, right? Because all of the strings are being hammered in the same way. Whereas with the guitar, because we have six strings, they all sound very different. So if you look at the original way I played this, I actually played it up on the uh, 16th fret on the G string. And I just found that jumping down to the G string there was avoidable and in avoiding it, I managed to create some sort of consistency of tone, which I quite liked. So I ended up refingering that melody. There's a lot of jumping around there, moving down to that ninth fret, but worth the effort because I think that it really adds some sort of, as I say, consistency in sound. Now, what can we take from this? Well, it's a melody and I wouldn't consider this to be a strict piano melody. Anyone is gonna play a melody like this. I think the focus here should be playing this melody in different areas. So when we look at the melody, it's very much a, a kind of B major sound. And I would encourage you actually, where possible, to rearrange melodies like this to fit in different areas of the neck. Now this is guitar related stuff, right? So if I take this down to the seventh fret area around our trusty uh, E-shaped bar chord and play that same melody starting on my root. fits really nicely under that fingering. Uh, and I think that the real goal here would be to be able to steal as much pieces of individual vocabulary rather than the entire solo. Initially, when I started transcribing this, I did actually put it in this area, but I found that we then needed to go too low and it didn't really work with the overall uh, full length of the transcription. I probably wouldn't play all that many melodies this high up on the guitar because I don't kind of like the way it sounds. I, I, I think of my home area as this area of the guitar rather than getting all the way up here. Uh, but of course, melodies are worth playing absolutely anywhere. So it's a wonderful little melody that repeats, uh, uh, kind of a motif that repeats several times, which is nice. Then from there, you have this really cool uh, descending thirds idea, which outlines the changes. And we don't need to go too deep into the changes here at all. Uh, but let me play that melody. So the way I've ended up putting it was we go, Now, again, moving down on the strings there, rather than initially, I think I transcribed this as something like. Uh, 
and it absolutely works there, but again, there's that, that consistency of tone. I don't like that, I prefer... Very, very simple uh, approach, just shifting down the strings like that, but sounds very musical. And we just got thirds there, right? So D and F sharp, B and D, and then jumping down, oh, because it's, it's moving to a B flat chord, of course, uh, to a, a G and a B flat. Uh, nice, right? Now, again, when we get there, you have this melody. Now, I think this would be the one thing I would take as a, a kind of cliche piano lick, if you like, which are these trills. Again, thinking B flat now. Very simple uh, as an approach, but works really nicely in the context of that melody. Then we get into my favorite lick of the piece. Now this is played a couple of times uh, and a real nice one for adapting to the guitar. So I would be thinking of this as fitting around kind of as, in terms of using this in different contexts, something that we would play that would fit around a C major chord. And we're gonna, we're gonna set play this. You notice that trill again? Piano players love doing that. Now the part of that that I want you to really focus on, and it's a rhythmic device as well, right? There's a triplet in there. One and triplet, ba, ba, da, ga, da. So let's look at that nice and slow. What have we got going on there? Seven on the G string, nine sliding up to 10. And then we've got this ascending C major triad. So nine, 10, and eight before jumping up to B. And then we're over to D on the high E string. And then that trill, C, D, C, pulling off B flat. And we play that same melody again towards the end of the solo like this. That's a nice, nice melody. And that's something that I absolutely want to start ingraining in my own playing. Uh, it's really nice if you're on a major chord. carried away and play too much. So it's definitely a really, really nice melody. And of course the transcription for this, I have put this up on my Patreon page. So if you want to check it out in any more detail, please do head on over there. Uh, there are definitely some other parts that, to this that, that are nice jumping up at the, to the, the high part here where we're playing that. That's a lot of chromaticism and you hear lines like that from Charlie Parker, of course. Uh, there's a lot of depth to something like that. Really, when you're playing something like that, I would be looking for each individual chord sound. So when I go... To me, that is very much a melody, and I think that I would be seeing that as being like an E-flat chord. Very nice melody, that. Mm -hmm. 
very cool melody. So taking each part like this is is just a great way to start adding melodies into your other playing. I'm a big believer in not necessarily learning transcriptions uh, of solos in order to play the solo that someone played, but to see what their vocabulary is, to see the smaller parts that make up uh, the larger solo, if you like. So that's all I'm going to show you today. Like I say, please do head on over to my Patreon page if you would like the transcription of that, post a video of you playing it, any of that good stuff, and let me know. Now, I do hope you have enjoyed that, guys. If you do have any questions, obviously, please do leave me a comment in that comment section below. And I can't stress this enough. Like I say, piano has reinvigorated my love of music. And if you would like to jump on that piano train, there is a link in the description to Piano's website where you can get a free month's trial. Don't have to pay a penny. And I get paid when you sign up. So it is a great, great way to support the channel. Please do consider helping the channel and also helping your own music by doing so. Lastly, I'm just going to run my credits. As always, a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. Couldn't keep making videos like this without your love, kindness, and support, guys. So thank you so, so much. Uh, you see the name scrolling there i love these people if you would like to join me on patreon link in the description you can get things like transcriptions access to my private facebook group private streams get access to me and all of my uh, all of my wonderful supporters where we have a great community where we talk music all the time if that doesn't suit you can also head on over to amazon check out one of my books many available and i hope you find something there that you enjoy as always guys if you have any questions please do let me know i'm looking forward to helping you on this one and if you do pick up a piano trial please do let me know because it's great to be able to engage with you guys not just on the guitar scene but also over in the piano group uh, where of course i'm active so as always thank you so so much for watching the video thank you for liking subscribing all of that good stuff and i will see you for another video soon goodbye